In a small village in Norway, there is a fire chief named Ingeman, and his 19-year-old son named Doug. They are faced with a situation where the residents of the village are becoming increasingly afraid of fires occurring in their town. The movie begins with an old lady preparing for bed when she suddenly hears a car stop in front of her house. She checks the front door and sees someone approaching. As she walks back to her room to wake her husband, telling him that he's here. They go to investigate and discover their kitchen already engulfed in flames. They try to call for help but the phone line is cut. They slowly make their way to the front door and manage to escape to safety. However, the old lady decides to return inside to retrieve something from the second floor. When she attempts to come back outside, she realizes the fire has already spread to the staircase. In the next scene, we are taken back to three weeks earlier. Doug pulls over his car at a roadside in the middle of an untamed forest. He then walks into the forest and ignites a fire using his matches on a pile of dead wood. Upon arriving home, Doug washes his hands before sneaking up to surprise his mom. While Doug sits down to eat, his father receives an urgent phone call. News spreads of a fire in the moor, and they quickly prepare to respond. Doug rushes to his room while his mom offers her husband a sandwich. With the alarm activated, Doug opens the garage door and before they leave, his mom gives them their sandwiches. They then all hurry to the moor, ready to confront the blazing flames. When they arrive at the moor, Doug's father instructs him to get the pump ready. Doug and the others bring the pump near the lake. Doug assists his father in holding the hose, and then his father asks him to take over. Doug looks proud when people are around and his dad watches as he extinguishes the fire. When the fire is extinguished, a police officer arrives to investigate and finds a cigarette but Before leaving for work with Doug, Alma looks concerned about her son and tells her husband that he needs a regular job. Alma arrives at an elderly couple's house to clean it. The old lady mentions to Alma that her son is old enough for military service. Alma replies, stating that he has already returned from military service. Doug and his father are checking their firefighting equipment. His father ironically mentions that it sounds wrong, but he is glad that there is a fire because it prevents the pump gear from drying out. While testing the pump, Doug becomes overly excited and gets scolded for playing around. Doug and his parents attend the community gathering where it becomes evident that Doug struggles to socialize, especially with friends his age. Doug insists on joining a climbing contest specifically designed for kids. Upon his success, the crowd applauds him but Doug feeling awkward, quietly returns home. Unaware that Doug has come home early, his parents find him preparing the equipment. His mother suggests to Doug that he should apply for a job at the post office as a postman. Doug follows his mother's advice and starts working as a postman. While he is sorting letters in the office, the people there have a conversation mentioning that Doug is the son of the fire chief. One day while filling his gas, Doug notices a group of kids playing with matches. He warns them not to play with matches at the gas station. He collects all their matches and walks away. He then drives his car and pulls over at another location and keeps a watchful eye on his surroundings. Afterwards, he lights up his cigarette. On his way home, Doug notices Elsa the wife of one of the firefighters, and offers her a ride. Elsa tells Doug that her husband mentioned he would become a good firefighter. This statement ignites a spark within Doug. Elsa continues that he will soon take over his dad's role. Doug responds with a note to which Elsa replies, good, because you can be whatever you want. Not long after he arrives home, a phone rings and Alma wakes her husband. It's a fire call. Doug's father asks Doug to drive since he is feeling unwell. However, Doug forgets to fill up the tank with water. His father instructs him to just drive and hope that there is water available near the fire. Fortunately there is a nearby creek, and Doug and the others rush to extinguish the fire. Doug notices his father standing in silence from a distance. Concerned, he asks if his father is okay. Taking the initiative, Doug sets out to find him some food. He arrives at a gas station to fill up his water tank and then goes to a store to find some food. Upon returning to the location, a police officer informs Doug that his father has been driven home. Doug then asks the police officer if there have been any developments regarding the fire, as someone must have started it. The police officer appears to agree with Doug's statement. When Doug arrives at his house, he discovers his father repairing the car. His father explains that due to his health condition, he can no longer continue working as a firefighter and expresses confidence that Doug is capable of taking over the role. In response, Doug reassures his dad, telling him not to worry because there won't be any more fires. After a week without any fires occurring, Doug finds contentment in his role as a postman. While sorting letters, he encounters the police officer. Curious about any developments in the fire investigation, Doug initiates a conversation with the officer asking if there are any leads. Doug shares his belief that the culprit is likely a man from their own village who possesses a thorough understanding of the area. The police officer acknowledges Doug's perspective. When Doug returns to his car, he discovers an enamel mug buried in the soil. He takes the mug and follows after the police officer. Doug approaches the officer and informs him that he found the mug at a previous fire scene, suggesting that it could be a potential lead. After returning to the post office, 
Doug is caught throwing a letter into a wastebasket by the post lady. The post lady then asks Doug to re-deliver the letter. Doug attempts to deliver the letter by knocking on the door multiple times but there is no response from inside the house. Suddenly, the owner of the house opens the door in an angry manner and demands that Doug leave. Doug leaves the letter behind and departs from the scene. In the midst of frustration, Doug suddenly hits a tree, which further fuels his anger. As a result, he decides to burn an empty house. Doug returns to his house and ignores his mom's request to eat. Concerned, his mom goes to the workshop to inform her husband that his clothes smell of smoke. However, her husband dismisses her and refuses to listen. She then intends to meet her neighbor Elsa. Suddenly, the fire alarm begins to ring. Despite this, her husband turns off the alarm and ignores the fires happening. Doug returns to the house and notices that it is only half burned. He quickly rushes back to his own house and retrieves two jerry cans of gasoline. Doug arrives at another house, enters the basement and starts spreading gasoline all over the area. He then ignites matches, initiating the fire. The flames rapidly spread, causing an explosion. Satisfaction lights up in his eyes as he watches the house burn. Doug comes back and goes to sleep, but suddenly he has a flashback of his childhood when he used to accompany his dad to fire scenes. The next morning, people gather at the fire scene while other firefighters search for any remaining items amidst the burned ruins. Doug's father finds a jerry can cap which he picks up and takes back home with him. Doug's father arrives while others are drying the hose, and Doug is sleeping in the truck. Meanwhile, Doug's mom discovers scattered matchsticks in the washing machine. One day, Doug wakes his father to help him service the pump as a precautionary measure in case there is another fire. However, his father refuses. Undeterred, Doug takes it upon himself to fix the pump and successfully gets it working. Doug continues his actions, finding a house and breaking the glass door. However when he ignites his matches, he is suddenly caught by a woman inside. The woman screams, causing Doug to panic. He hastily attempts to ignite another match but fails to start a fire. Along the way he discovers an empty barn and takes extra care to ensure there are no people inside. Doug proceeds to spread gasoline and sets the barn on fire. On his way back, Doug's expression shifts to one of sinister satisfaction as he looks back at the burning barn. Doug returns to the barn but this time he is equipped as a firefighter to put out the fire. Eventually, Doug arrives at the house where his attempt to start a fire had failed. The old woman is being interviewed and asked for details about the suspect. Suddenly she notices Doug and approaches him not because she recognizes him but to forbid him from smoking. The police take notice of Doug as he walks around. The police then gather and interrogate some of the firefighters, including Doug at the district hall. They ask them why they joined the fire brigade. Doug responds that he joined because his dad is the fire chief. The police continue by asking him if he has many friends, to which he answers affirmatively. In the background, Alfred finishes his conversation with the chief of police, and the police inquire about Doug. Alfred responds that Doug is a nice guy, although sometimes he can be a little eager. The police remark that some people consider him weird. On their way home, Alfred discusses with his wife Elsa that the police suspect one of the firefighters to be the firebug. After the interrogation is finished, Doug's mom cleans the district hall, and one of the police officers picks up a ringing phone. Doug's mom notices the police officer looking rushed to go somewhere. Curious, she asks her colleague what is happening, and her colleague responds that they have caught the firebug. Overwhelmed with desperation and panic, Doug's mom hastily rushes back to her home. Before she reaches her home, Elsa calls out to her and informs her that they have indeed captured the firebug. Doug's mom eagerly asks who it is, and Elsa replies that the culprit is not someone from around their area. Doug's mom appears relieved, and Elsa invites her to have a coffee at her house but Doug's mom declines. When she arrives home, Doug's mom informs Doug that the firebug has been captured. Doug appears unbothered and remarks that it is good news. Doug's mom then slowly confesses to him that she had a foolish thought. However, Doug reassures his mom, urging her to believe him. After their conversation, Doug leaves to go somewhere. On his way, Doug pulls over and watches Elsa from afar. However when Elsa notices him, he quickly leaves. Not long after, Doug is stopped by the police. Doug asks why there is a roadblock. The police reply that they have made a mistake. The person they captured is just a drunk individual who panicked when stopped by the police. Doug comes home and informs his mom that the person stopped by the police was not the firebug. His mom looking worried watches as her son goes to sleep. The next day when Doug fills up his jerry can at the gas station, he spots a party and decides to join. Doug continues to walk around and one of his friends offers him a beer, but he politely refuses. Due to his limited social skills, he ends up sitting alone until a girl sitting next to him holds his hand while talking with her friend. Doug enjoys the moment but it doesn't last long. The girl mistakenly thinks Doug is her boyfriend and offers to keep holding his hand. After a while, Doug notices through a window that a group of teenagers is chasing and cornering someone at the gas station, suspecting him to be the firebug. Doug intervenes asking them to stop their behavior towards the man. 
On his way back home, Doug spots the two girls he encountered earlier, and he offers them a ride. The girls appear to enjoy the ride in the fire truck with the siren blaring. They eventually decide to go swimming in the lake, and Doug seems to have a great time. After their swim they engage in conversation, and one of the girl compliments Doug that he is a smart guy who can do whatever he wants. Encouraged, Doug goes into the water to show them something. However, as he is about to demonstrate, the girls start leaving with other guys. Doug shouts that he is like Jesus walking on the water. Doug starts to realize that the girls have left him, feeling embarrassed and humiliated, and anger can be seen in his eyes. A fire breaks out once again, this time at the old couple's house from the beginning. Doug pretends to head back home, and his dad informs him about the fire. He quickly rushes to the location, following the fire truck. Upon arrival, Doug tries to approach the house but Alfred stops him. Other firefighters inform them that there are two people in the backyard, and it turns out that the old couple has survived the fire. Doug offers his jacket to the old lady, who simply stares at him. Doug and the other firefighters begin extinguishing the fire. Suddenly the water pressure drops, prompting Doug to check the pump. As he inspects it, the pump bursts water, and two teenagers laugh at him. Doug becomes angry and tells them to go home. Suddenly Doug appears at Elsa's house and informs her about the fire at the old couple's house. He then continues by mentioning that she said something nice to him in the car, but Elsa cannot remember what it was. Doug approaches her and tells Elsa that something will burn nearby, and the fire equipment is far away. Feeling scared and confused, Elsa asks Doug to leave. Doug then drives back home with a mix of emotions. When he arrives, his mom watches him from the window, and she then goes outside, confused about her son's whereabouts. She looks for him and finally finds her son. She walks slowly as he starts burning the house. Doug turns around and sees his mom behind him. Doug's mom walks past her husband who is watching the burning house from a distance. The next morning, Doug's father finds his son eating. He stands and watches, talking to himself as he urges his son to surrender to the police and confess everything he has done. Doug notices his father and asks what he needs, but his father simply leaves. When Doug's father leaves, Doug asks him where he is going but is ignored. It turns out that Doug's father goes to Alfred's house to hand him the jerry can cap he found earlier. He asks Alfred to report his son to the police. The police arrive at Doug's house, but Doug continues with his activities and even asks the police for help. Before the police take her son, Doug's mom gives him a jacket. As the police take her son, Doug's mom can't help but express her emotions. When the police interrogate him, Doug confidently denies all the accusations. However, when the police point out that he is the only one capable of committing the acts with a clear head and in a clever way, Doug smiles and tells the police not to let others take the credit, and congratulates him for solving the case. 